It's time to learn, repair, and maintain everything coffee. Instructional videos brought to you by WholeLatteLove.com. Hi, I'm Todd with the Whole Latte Love, and I'm happy I'm working with Mark today. What do we got, Todd? We Something have the, really cool, right? Yeah, we have the Profitech Pro 700, but this time we have a cutaway version. I'm going to come in just so we, we're going to take a look at how this whole thing works, right? Yep, I'm going to show all the ins and outs of it. We're going to walk through the whole thing. Might be a little bit long, but if you want to learn about the Pro 700, this is going to be the time to do it. This is probably the best learning tool there will be about this yeah, machine. So they fired this off to us, so we get to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the water flow through the system, and that way we'll hit all the parts. Mm -hmm. It starts right over to here, right over here. This fitting here is where you hook up your water line if you have one. So the water will come up through here, and then through this T into the pump. If you have a reservoir, it would hook onto here. You see that fitting there? Yep. A little nipple back there. Okay, so here's how your reservoir would fit in. This rubber tube, notice there's an inline filter. Mm -hmm. We'll hook onto that fitting. Now what we have here, the machine knows it has water when, where is it? There it is. See, that, that's a, that black magnet. Mm -hmm. When that, that's in a float, when it raises up, activates a switch here, which tells the machine that there's water in it. So it'll operate. So you know when you got water and when you're out of water. If you're using the water line, there's a switch on the front, we'll show later, that mm -hmm. will bypass that switch. And it's a lever here. If you want to use a water line connection, this faces this direction. If you want to use the uh, reservoir, face it that way. Now some machines would use a solenoid valve for that, right? But yep. We prefer the mechanical valves. Keep it simple. And that's yep. actually, we've got to zoom back just for a second. Yeah. If you look at this machine, it's dual boiler, PID, rotary pump, reservoir, water line connection. But look how simple it is. Right. They kept it really basic. The engineers did an amazing job with this. Didn't add anything extra, but, but put in everything you need. And really clean plumbing and, and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just Yeah, no nice. Teflon tubing. We got stainless steel braided line. Like here, this one here leads over to the pump. It's a fluid out, fluid Otec <laughs> pump, I can say. Easy it. to say. Yeah. And RPM commercial motor on it. So the water mm -hmm. goes in the pump here, comes out this side. Now, just the pump pressure, you see this piece here, okay, yeah. and it's accessible from, yep, right from there, the bottom. Right? You and know, Todd, and I got to mention, you know, you appreciate the inside of this machine, right? Uh -huh. And you see just about every machine that's made you've been inside. Well, I see so, a fair so amount. You, so yeah. you've got, you know, your opinion's really kind of valuable on this, I think. Well, thank you, <laughs> but <laughs> I do my best. Yeah. Uh, so the water comes out of that side. When you adjust this, the pump pressure, then adjust the spring in there, which if you want to lower the pressure, you loosen this, it bypasses water around, so only X amount will come out here. Right. Okay, so it comes to this T. Then from here, this uh, capillary tube here leads over to your brew pressure gauge. And then the water comes up to here. Leads over to this assembly here, which is also really nice. It's very accessible if you ever have to get at it. Right. Uh, so the water comes in here, then it picks one or two directions. It can go to the brew boiler, so when you raise the lever up to brew, water will come through here, through this little check valve, to this T, up through there, and then fill the brew boiler. And let's take a peek inside the brew boiler real right. quick. So the water will be dropping down right from there, into the brew boiler. Okay, now, this is a safety valve, which is called an OPV, but in this case it's used for a safety. If it's a vibration pump, it's more of an OPV or a, a brew pressure adjustment. This is just for safety. If the boiler pressure over, uh, increases too much, a little rubber valve will open up there and send water through here, a rubber tube onto this, which will go into your drip tray. Now, as long as we're looking at this check valve here, just kind of mm -hmm. in case you're interested, we'll show you what this is all about. I happen to have one here. What a surprise. <laughs> and... Let's see. So you have a spring. Mm -hmm. yep. Then you have a ball there. Mm -hmm. And the rubber O-ring up there, that ball just seals against that. So the water can only run one way through that. Exactly. It goes the other way, it seals mm -hmm. it up. Yep, so that's your check valve. Uh, and then, so the other direction of the water goes through this solenoid valve, through this check valve, through the copper tube, then fill the steam boiler. Now, the solenoid valve uh, it's cut away there. Yeah, you can see inside. So basically, it's just a magnet. Right. That's all it is. And the magnet, when it energizes, it pulls a little plunger open there. And you've got a demo of that, yeah. right? Yeah, just for the fun of it. We'll bring yeah. it right up to the front over here. Sure. Kind of show you what they look like inside, in case you're curious. So your magnet comes off. Then we'll open that up. Okay. 
Okay. So that's a little guy that moves back and forth? Yep, it pulls up. Mm -hmm. So the, when the water comes in, it comes in here. Mm -hmm. And then when this opens up, it allows the water to flow through there, through that hole, and come out the other side. Mm -hmm. And there's a little spring on top. That spring pushes it down to keep it in contact. Until you energize the Until, magnet? Exactly. Which we're going to demonstrate, right? Or yeah. you are going to demonstrate. Get a little bit of a demonstration. So here's your magnet. Yeah. Your coil, as we really call it. And I'll okay. just put a couple wires on there. I'll try and be quick. You need your little demo screwdriver, right? Yeah, I need something, something metal to put in there. Yeah. Okay. So I click it on. Okay, see it's holding it in place. Yeah. Can, can you hear that? And then you yeah, turn it off. Vibration. That so, spring pushes it right down when it's off. Yeah. Yeah. So turn it off. Drops out. Cool. Um, Boys and their toys. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, just, I'm sorry, I'll be really quick here, but I want to show you one other thing. Yep. Now, you may be, sometimes when you're listening to the machine, you're trying to figure out what's going on with it. There's solenoid ways will, solenoid valves will give a little bit of a click sometimes. This is one way of diagnosing a... Exactly. You should hear it at certain times. Mm -hmm. right? so. so, if you can listen to this. Yeah. Okay. You hear the click and the it's a little something buzzing there a little yep. bit. Yeah. Get rid of that. Okay, without much further ado, mm -hmm. uh, where do you want to go next? Let's see. Let's go to the steam boiler. Okay. Let's do that. I want to go there. I asked you, then I'll tell you where I want to go. But, <laughs> okay. you know, safety valve. This is a pressure relief valve. Very high quality commercial style one. We like this. And on this one, there's no adjustments. So nobody can get in there and mess with it and raise it higher or lower. Mm -hmm. uh, commercial quality, we really like that one a lot. So that's if like the boiler were to overheat or something, uh -huh. it, it lets the pressure yeah. out. That's one safety. The other safety we have is we have two high limits here. Either one of these trip shuts the uh, heating element off in the boiler. And those just those have reset buttons. Yeah, on them, manual right? resets exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's your fill probe. So let's take a look at the angle down here. Mm -hmm. So when uh, this senses the water go level goes below the bottom of the probe, it'll turn on the the pump and the mm -hmm. solenoid valve over here, and it fills it up when water hits that. It turns the pump off, closes the solenoid valve. So the natural water level in that boiler when the machine's in operation is just right up to that, right up the to end there. of that thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then and the rest of the boiler is just full of steam, right? You got a yeah, good head of steam on top of it. Yeah. Over here we have a vacuum relief valve. And what this will do is when the boiler is heating up, I don't know if I have something I can help you move this thing. See that little rubber O-ring there? Yeah. When the boiler's heating it, water will actually boil in that, and you'll have steam coming out of the top here. Mm -hmm. And eventually it picks up enough velocity and moves this up. Oh good, I can move a little bit. Okay. And it seals the... Yeah, that O-ring seals against the Teflon there. Now off the top of this, what's nice about this machine is it has a rubber tube here, and mm -hmm. this rubber tube right, runs right down to the, right of the in front of the drip tray. So it's not just blowing off that steam inside the case. It actually keeps the inside nice and clean nice and, dry. and dry. All the, yeah. all the wire connections will not corrode or have any issues from that. Yeah. While we're over here, mm -hmm. uh, two control boards, actually one control board, one power board. This is your main control board, that's your brains of the operation. And this control board here, or power board, excuse me, will send power over to the PID to energize it, mm -hmm. and that's really all it does. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, over here. And we kind of like how those are mounted behind that nice shield and... Mm -hmm. All that? Yep, separated from the boiler. And then oh. these are the relays I'm, up top I'm here? back. Here's your static relays. Right here, here and there. Those are what energize the boilers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because the way the PID works is it just sends little bits of voltage to the boiler, just kind of on and off, on and off, on and off, just so it maintains a very right. steady temperature. Right. And those static relays can do it without arcing. Right. So, brew boiler. Mm -hmm. You see it's noticed it's smaller. Mm -hmm. Uh, now this has a thermal siphon system, the way it works with a brew group. So your, your, hot, your, your water fills the boiler from here, mm -hmm. and then the hot water rises, goes mm -hmm. through this tube here, to the brew group, right. then it comes back through this tube. That's second tube. Second so tube it's right going there. in that, that top copper and the bottom copper, it's coming out. And that's just constantly circulating, right? Correct. And that Based comes, on convection, basically. It comes down to the bottom of the boiler over here, so you get 
it's way back, hard to see, but it's it's yeah. there. Yeah. So you get a constant flow of water like this. It keeps the brew group nice and hot. That's all that about that temperature stability. Mm -hmm. you get a big hunk of metal in the brew group. <laughs> That's a big you? hunk of metal. <laughs> yeah. Chrome plated brass. Yeah. And this is your tube off the top of the boiler for steam. Mm -hmm. And then you have your tube off the bottom of the boiler. I'm just going to be able to see it probably, but yeah. off the bottom there. Kind of back in the yeah. left, yep. And that's for your hot water dispenser over here. Okay. Yeah, I think we saw the pretty much the insides. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. one more thing. These are the probes for your PIDs, uh, your temperature probes. And I believe these are a little bit older. The new styles are a little bit different, which we have on this machine. So you've got like the... They just changed them a little another bit. Another 700, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They evolve, sure. That's a brand new 700 fresh off the boat. Okay. It'll go to the front. That's a boat from Italy, right? Yes, it is. Designed in Germany. Built in Italy. Handcrafted in Italy. Very well said. <laughs> Over here we had steam valves. We like, I guess you call, we call them sprung steam valves or maybe some other terminology. But these yeah. are really nice. Because they have springs in them. Yeah. You notice how the knob has no pressure on it here. Yeah. Okay. You can move that around. When you turn it back, it pulls on a shaft, which pulls this back, opens a a line for the steam to come through there, down through your uh, steam wand. And when you close it, mm -hmm. now it's just spr this spring pressure or tension is pushing this valve closed. So if you go like this, you can see it opens up. Right. So you're not cranking down and ruining the valve seat, like I right. just did with this metal piece. <laughs> it's a demo machine. So they, they last a really long time. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to crank it hard to open it or close it, and it's a short throw, right? It's like yeah. less than half a turn of that knob. It's fully open, fully closed, well, pretty much. Maybe a little bit more than that. A little more, but, yeah. Uh, it works nice. Really nice valves. That's a yeah. commercial-style valve. Uh-oh, dropping pieces. No. Okay, your steam wand, the way this works okay. is uh, you have a spring up there, and you have mm -hmm. this piece here. It goes on top of there, so mm -hmm. it rolls real nice. And it just pushes up and you screw it in. If you ever want to take these off for cleaning, when you put them on, you just have to push pretty hard because that spring's in there. So you got to push against the pressure of that spring to get exactly. it to mm -hmm. thread up. Yep. Now, on these, it's a no-burn steam wand, mm -hmm. but it's nice. They put the rubber on there anyways. Right. Um, We're going to take a look inside it. Yep. So the tef steam actually comes through the Teflon. That's how it's insulated. And you probably can't see it, but inside here, we have another little O-ring inside that seals, that seals up. up against the Teflon. Yep. Very smart. Okay, uh, hot water. Same uh, deal over there, same, same, deal. same valve. Correct. And what's nice about it, if they, these start leaking through, you can actually take this apart pretty easily, just take mm -hmm. this piece off, that you can pull out that uh, the seal, flip it around. A little red guy in there. Yep. Flip and it around and you got good a to go. new seal pretty much. Yep. Okay, Brew Group, the E61. And that's cool. Yeah, that's this is cut pretty away cool. of it. Cut away. See how it really works. Yeah, so we'll, when you raise the lever up, it opens this, there's an actuator, pushes up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another uh, Brew Group will open up and I'll show you a little mm -hmm. more detail. When you lower it down, it pushes these two open. Mm -hmm. You know, it just has to push two open to let the, uh, the pressure off. So when the water flows through here, they put a line here to show you the water goes up from here mm -hmm. down to your coffee. When you lower the lever down, the back pressure forces the water up through there, through there, and then down out the bottom into your, uh, into your drip, drip pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so now we'll spend just a couple minutes on a brew group. Okay, I'm just going to open this baby up. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we're Hopefully going to do a full rebuild video on these, right? Yes, we will. I'm looking forward to that one. Should have done that one by now, but we haven't. Yeah. Okay. So when you open it up, it'll be on the machine. It'll be like this. Mm -hmm. You can just reach in there and with a needle nose, grab those out. You see down the sides. And you have seals on here. Mm -hmm. and those are important to keep clean or replace. And then we'll take this off. That's a squeaky one. Huh? How do you like that? <laughs> this is a good way to test your speakers when you listen to this video. Yeah. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> take each piece out and kind of lay it out here so we can okay. see it. And we'll also get this out. And I'll do my best to give a quick explanation. We'll get sure. a lot deeper into this when we do the, uh, the rebuild. rebuild. Yeah. Okay, there's a cam there. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when this cam turns, when you turn the, the push the lever up, this mm -hmm. cam here will push up on an actuator, which opens up so water can go through. Right. When you turn the cam down, there will be another one. At the bottom. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It comes up like that. It'll push that down and let the water release Out to the bottom. Okay. Now, one of the really kind of cool thing about this is. So this is in here, water circulating through your thermal siphon system, in the top, out the bottom. This is constantly doing that constantly once the go. machine's up to temperature, right? Yep. And this seal here won't let it go down into the bottom of the brew group and out to the, um, uh, to the uh, coffee. Coffee, yeah, thank yeah. you. So the water from there, when the pump goes on, pressurizes this, sends water up, actually through here, so some tiny holes there. It's tiny little guys. Yeah, yeah, you got them. Then up into this chamber. And then we have through this filter. A little screen in there. Yep. Okay. And then down through that little orifice in the middle. A tiny guy. Yep. And then down to brew with. Then it goes right down through the center there. Mm -hmm. Into this chamber. And then up there and all around. So that's the basics how it works. All right. Uh, very sweet design. I've been doing this for years. Oh, what else we got, Mark? Uh, what am I forgetting? Just a quick over, overview of the front. I mean, there's your, your gauges, okay, right? Okay, there's yeah. our pressure, steam pressure gauge. There's our brew pressure gauge. And again, driven by those little capillary tubes that we saw. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is what's between water line and reservoir. That's reservoir, that's water line. Mm -hmm. That's the faucet. And you and can turn off the steam, steam boiler. Steam if you want to. You leave that, so you just want to brew, you can turn the steam boiler off. Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't have any preheat or anything from a heat exchanger, so you're not affecting the brew temperature at all when you do that. Mm -hmm. And this is for your drain line. You can come off there, or you can undo this, put those over there, and then it'll uh, drain from the other side. So you don't have to empty your drip tray all the time. Yes. Well, actually, <laughs> if you hook this to a water line, yeah. make sure you have a drain line. Yeah. Because if anything just in case. starts leaking through, <laughs> Here or through yeah. one of these, you want to be able to drain. Right. Okay. I would say that's pretty important. That's a good tip. So yeah. if you're going to plumb the machine, always have a a drain line installed there, right? Yeah, I'd say that'd be important. Okay. Anything else? Um, we mentioned if you hooked a water line, make sure you have a water conditioning system. Yes. You know, BWT makes a really nice one, but if you hooked a water line, spend the extra few bucks. It, yeah. It'll be great, and it's not that much. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. I think that's it. Well, that's, that's really cool. It's not often you get to see a machine like this that's all cut apart so you can see all the ins and outs. I mean, I think one thing we didn't mention, you know, those boilers, they got that nice insulation around them. Um, okay. They're all stainless steel, right? You've that's got good So you've got complete boilers okay, that are totally here's, out. Yep, yeah, there's a steam boiler. Beautiful welds on these things. Mm -hmm. Very well made. And, well, as long as we're talking about this, I'll be quick. Okay. But, uh, it's really nice. I'm you sorry. can't help yourself, can't can help. you? You just like this. But stuff. I just love it. If something goes wrong with this boiler, you can yeah. undo a few tubes. We even have. Right. I think we had a video that shows it. Yeah. And you can send the whole unit in us. Right. To get it serviced. Yeah. If you get want it serviced. To. The heating element, three bolts, and it's off. Right. Simple. And these have really nice mounts. I mean, that's another. I mean, it's they're nicely mounted in there, right? Yeah. Oh, over here. Yeah. Yeah, they're all bolted to the frame right through here. Right. So, they're, they're pretty solid. And the same thing with the, you know, the pump here, it's on those nice rubber feet, you yep. know. So it's very, very quiet. Very and, quiet. And I mean, because the way the frame is designed, it's one piece all the way through, it ships real nice. You know, shipping damage like on that. these is yeah. very rare. Yeah, we yeah. like that because we ship them yeah. all over the place. So solid hunk of metal front to back, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Cool. All right. Okay. Unless you point me in the direction back in here again, I guess we're done. Yeah, I mean, you know, and if you know, if you're watching the video, if you got any questions, you know, we're always here to help you guys out and answer anything you want. But the Pro 700, very, very nice machine, right? Yep. All right, Todd. Very good. Thanks for watching. Hey, why not subscribe now for easy, free access to more videos on everything coffee? Brought to you by WholeLatteLove.com.